Subtopic 5.2 is all about natural selection. To begin, natural selection is defined as the process whereby organisms that are better suited to live in their environment tend to survive and reproduce more offspring. The two key words here are process and natural. This is a process that leads to evolution, which means it is not itself the definition of evolution. Also, this happens naturally in environments, meaning that humans are not doing any selecting, which occurs during artificial selection. In order for evolution by natural selection to take place, there are a number of conditions that need to be met. First, variation must exist in the population. This is due to randomness and simply means that all organisms do not possess the same phenotype. Second, some organisms must have adaptations, or traits that are beneficial to their survival. This differential reproduction means that some organisms will be better suited to live in their environment compared to others, based off random variation. Third, there must be some form of pressure applied to the organisms in the environment. This is usually seen through competition for resources. If there's not enough food available for everyone to survive, then some organisms have to die. Finally, some organisms will be naturally selected for based on their adaptations, meaning they will have a better chance at survival in their environment. If you are able to survive and grow up to be an adult, that means you can reproduce and pass along your beneficial adaptations to your offspring. If all four of these components are met, then allele frequencies of the population will change, which means that evolution is taking place. As stated earlier, in order for evolution to take place, there has to be variation in a population. For organisms that sexually reproduce, there are three different mechanisms that can create genetic variation for natural selection to work. The three methods are mutation, meiosis, and sexual reproduction. Mutations are random changes in the genetic code and can be either beneficial, harmful, or have no effect on the phenotype of an organism. While scientists have a pretty good grasp of where mutations can occur, it is always random as to whether the mutation will be good, bad, or neutral. This random change causes variation in the genome. Next, we have the process of meiosis. This is a reduction division of one diploid cell that creates four genetically different and haploid daughter cells. This type of division only occurs in gametes, or sex cells, like sperm in males and eggs in females. This creates variation because each sperm and egg cell are genetically unique, which is created by independent assortment of chromosomes and crossing over. Once we have unique cells from meiosis, the next form of variation occurs with sexual reproduction itself. This process entails a random sperm cell meeting with a random egg cell to fertilize a unique zygote. This randomness also produces a high amount of variation within a population's gene pool. The next requirement for evolution by natural selection to take place is the concept of adaptations. Some organisms must possess adaptations, which are characteristics that make that individual suited to live and survive in their environment. Two examples of adaptations below are migratory birds, who have a behavioral adaptation to survive by migrating during the winter, and the leaf-tailed gecko that blends in perfectly with its environment to evade predators. Due to these adaptations, these organisms have a better chance to survive and pass along their beneficial traits to their offspring. The third requirement for evolution by natural selection to happen is based around the idea of competition. Resources are always limited in nature, which means that if organisms reproduce exponentially, there will not be enough resources for all organisms to survive. This race for survival creates competition. If more offspring are produced than can survive, the weaker traits from organisms that do not have beneficial adaptations are likely to die off, essentially eliminating their potential to pass off their traits to future offspring. Competition fuels selection, and natural selection could not operate without it. The last step is essentially putting all of the pieces together for selection to take place naturally. Individuals that are better adapted to their environment tend to survive and reproduce more offspring, passing on their genes to the next generation. Let's look at this example. There is a population of mice that live on these dark rocks and possess variation with their fur color. 
the black mice have a beneficial adaptation based on the environment being a darker color. There is competition between the mice for food, meaning that the mice have to expose themselves to forage. The selection here happens with their predator, which is the bird. The bird can better see the lighter mice because they stand out against the dark environment. This means that the darker mice will survive at a higher frequency and reproduce, passing their genes on to their offspring. As you can see, the allele frequencies of the light versus the dark fur color gene is different after generations have passed, meaning that the population is evolving over generational time. It is important to note that adaptations are based solely on the environment, and if the environment changes, a beneficial adaptation could turn into a harmful trait. If this population of mice were to relocate to an environment with a lighter background, the lighter mouse would then possess the beneficial adaptation where the darker mouse would not be selected for. There are examples of evolution by means of natural selection that scientists have recorded data on. Let's take a look at two examples. Our first example explores bird beaks in the Galapagos Islands far off of the coast of Ecuador. Daphne Major is an island in the Galapagos that housed birds with an average medium beak size. When a drought ravaged the island, plants were producing larger seeds than normal. Only birds with larger beaks had the ability to consume these seeds for food. This led to an increase in the average beak size over generations on the island. Second, we can look at the evolution of bacteria and their resistance to antibiotics. Due to mutations and horizontal gene transfer, bacteria have variations in their gene pool. Some of these variations give them resistance to antibiotics, which are chemicals that we use to kill them. If you have a bacterial infection and use antibiotics to treat it, there is always a chance that some of the bacteria will be resistant. If they are, they will survive while the majority of the non-resistant bacteria are killed. Over time, the resistant bacteria will continue to reproduce asexually, making clones that are also resistant. This explains how bacteria can evolve and become resistant to our medicines, and if this keeps happening, it would have dire consequences about the effectiveness of antibiotics in the future.